Hi! Today I'm going to be going through the 2024 official and not so official trend predictions and just discuss with you a lot how I feel about them, if I think that I'm going to be rocking with them this year or if I just don't fuck with them. I also think it'll be fun to look back in a year's time and see if I changed my mind on any of them or if I ended up not going with anything that I thought that I'd be into and also looking back and seeing what trends emerged out the woodwork that weren't predicted by anyone online. I'm just going to preface this with a little disclaimer, I'm obviously not a fashion expert nor do I claim to be one. Did not study fashion at uni, I'm not a fashion forecaster, I am just a girl who likes clothes, who has always liked clothes, who probably owns and buys way too many clothes but my knowledge on like runway and like old school fashion houses is just like I wouldn't say non-existent, but like that's just not my jam. I get a lot of my inspiration from Pinterest, from my friends, like the people around me are incredibly cool and I love the way they dress and they inspire me every day. And obviously social media. I get a lot of inspiration from what I see on Instagram, on TikTok, what else? YouTube, of course. I also feel like I don't put big fashion brands on like a pedestal. I would rather own things that I found in like an Italian flea market that have a label that I've never heard of than I would have a wardrobe full of designer clothing. Because of technology and things like social media and TikTok, consumer behavior is just like completely unpredictable now. Obviously there's aspects of it that's predictable, but all it takes is one TikTok to go viral and the impact of that one singular video can just completely shift the consumer appetite and demand for a singular product or brand or item or style of something that just like didn't exist before that video. The way trend forecasting works is obviously it's informed by lots of different contextual things like what's going on in society and popular culture and the world and the environment and the economy but also looking at and analysing trends and common themes in runways and fashion shows to predict emerging styles. Whereas now trends are influenced by all sorts of unexpected factors. So when I was researching for this video, I went for my usual go-tos. I did a little TikTok dive, YouTube dive, but I also read a really interesting article on business of fashion. I do find some of the trend predictions that you find just really funny because I feel like people are trying to always have like a hot take and say something really original. And people will just throw something in there that they think is super controversial, maybe because it might get good engagement, but also just because it's kind of impossible to come up with something new because everything has already been done and has already come back around and because of how fast the trend cycle is like sometimes it just seems near impossible and on some of the videos that I was watching a lot of the comments would be like these have been trending this has been trending for the last year even but often things are picked up by subcultures before they make it into the mainstream so things like pops of red and coquette and ballerina core and bows and things like that were all things that we saw last year but people like me and probably like you because you're here watching this are chronically online so we would have seen these things already and it's easier to forget about the people who don't spend as much time online and are just influenced by what they see like on the high street and on other people so it's that ripple effect which i think is really interesting as well i just think the whole thing's really interesting so according to the business of fashion article that i read this is what will be trending in 2024 so we're going to see a continuation of quiet luxury and connected to that that means we're going to be seeing less logos more neutral color palettes not so much a capsule wardrobe but just building like a quality uniform and what people deem as quiet fashion it's more low-key and more refined because apparently we are experiencing consumer fatigue for y2k fashion and we'll be leaning more towards 90s minimalism this might go without saying if you've been watching my other videos but I am down for this. I've definitely noticed my wardrobe does not really consist of anything with any major logos on it. I find myself looking for more refined just really like well cut well made pieces. I want pieces that just like go together and more like simplified outfits. 90s minimalism is super timeless and it's really easy to do it on a budget. It's really easy to thrift. Although saying that the 90s minimalism trend is a continuation from quite luxury which is almost like an oxymoron on because you don't have to spend a lot of money to achieve that look. And then 90s minimalism slightly feeds into corp core. The article referred to it as workwear outside of the office, but basically seeing clothes that would be more traditionally seen in corporate and office environments, so shirts, blazers, suit trousers, and tailoring. That 
is just something that I fuck heavy with. I love it. It looks great. It looks expensive. Again, very thriftable, easy to do on a budget. You could spend an afternoon on Vinted and just buy yourself an entire corp core wardrobe if you wanted to, because there's such an abundance of that type of clothing out there already. And there are so many different like silhouettes you can play around with. I've really been getting into shirts a lot more this year and just finding shirts that have cool details, maybe a little bit of shearing, some pleats, just interesting like shape and structure to them. Suit trousers are such a great everyday trouser. They look great with a really casual, like just a t-shirt or a cute vest on top. I love switching out a pair of loafers in for an outfit that I would have traditionally more worn like trainers with. And I don't know if it's like an age thing because I'm entering my late 20s. I'm 26. But I find myself wanting to dress more a bit like a woman than I do a girl but I also feel like that was contextualized like when I was in my early 20s and late teens Y2K was so massive and that was like really what I was into at the time but when I put together an outfit that feels more 90s minimalism or corp core I just feel like I'm that girl you know and I really like it so I think that, that was what I was keeping in mind when I was clearing out my wardrobe recently just like is that the message that I want to convey I'm going to show you an example I did yet another wardrobe color this morning I have this t-shirt from my mom's house and I really like it and it's vintage and it's fun, but it's a bit like Hannah Montana vibes. Do you know what I mean? This is not 90s minimalism. This is not court core. This is not ladylike. So goodbye. And I feel like this is a trend that surely is not very regrettable. Now I know that if any millennials are watching this, they will be laughing because there was the era of wearing like suit blazers to the club and like proper heels with like skinny jeans. And like that was the vibe and that was also influenced by court core, but like, of its time. Going back to the Business of Fashion article, it said that there will be a continuation of girl. Obviously 2023 was the year of the girl. We had girl dinner, girl math, the Beyonce Renaissance tour, Taylor Swift era's tour, the Barbie movie, everything in and around life. 2023 was about the celebration of girl and I loved it. And underneath that theme of girl fell bows, coquette core, lace and ruffles. Now I love ruffles, but I actually, honestly don't think that I bought a singular thing with bows on it nor have I been putting bows on things like I'm trying to think if I put bows on anything last year I really don't think I did it's not really my vibe I'm trying to think if I did do this because this will be really embarrassing if someone like pulls up some receipts of me wearing bows but I don't think I did I remember just thinking like that's cute not for me I just thought of something I have the Freya McKee zip up jorts that have bows on them. That's literally probably the only thing that I have. Lace is something that I definitely was super into last year and the year before. I wore a lot of it. I don't hate it now but I don't find myself reaching for it as much. Roses, I did make like a rose necklace thing and that was when I went to Paris which was actually like this time last year but I don't think I've worn it since. Ruffles I do like. I like shape and I like texture and I think it's very flattering or can be really flattering especially like ruffle trim sleeves or even like a modern take on a peplum I think it's really cute and really flattering so I am into it still. The last main theme that they mentioned was grand parkour. I think with this trend the discourse around it started a little bit more later into last year and is carrying on to or even going to blow up this year. It involves like oversized shapes, mohair cardigans or knit vests, wearing loafers and workwear pants. This is something that's just not really for me I'm not gonna lie. I like a cardigan but those like big oversized ones the v-neck ones I'm not super into. Grandpa core is not it for me. Moving on to leopard and cheetah print. What is the difference between the two? Not gonna lie they're really similar. I don't know how we're supposed to distinguish between the two but leopard and cheetah print was a trend that was on pretty much every trend prediction that I saw. I think again we started to see this more towards the end of 2023. There were the Wales Bonner Sambas that came out. Guys this one's not for me. I'm gonna just have out. I'm gonna leave this one right there for you. Leopard print or cheetah print or whatever. It's just not my vibe. Polka dots, however, love. So cute, j'adore. There's some cute realization par polka dot dresses. Nina Bow has some really cute polka dot bags. I like polka dots. I think it's a cute print. I think it can be done really well. Um, it doesn't have to be super in your face. Oh my God, look at my new granny trolley actually. I got a polka dot granny trolley to do my grocery shopping with because the big grocery store is like 10, 15 minutes from my house and I can't carry everything. I'm just a little girl. I'm so dainty and small. So I have a granny trolley and the one that I had before was not cool. This, however, stunning, beautiful, cute, adorable. And she is cold hard evidence that I'm ready to get down and dirty with polka dots for 2024. So Mandy Lee, who is Old Loser in Brooklyn, pointed out that 
Cheetah or leopard print and polka dots are prints that defined the early 2010s and the indie sleaze era. Indie sleaze is a style slash core that has been in the fashion discourse now for at least like two years. In fact, I actually think Mandy Lee did a TikTok about the indie sleaze resurgence that blew up, went viral and had everyone talking about it. Me and my friend Susie had a party last summer and the theme was indie sleaze and I did a TikTok about what people wore. <laughs> I'm still getting comments to this day and it's been like seven, eight months since that party of people commenting on how accurate or inaccurate the outfits were. But when we set the theme, we had like everyone we know asking us what is indie sleaze and how do they dress like it? So clearly that trend and what defines it hasn't really hit the mainstream yet and is still like coming up. But it's basically just like 2013, 2014 Tumblr and we're going to continue to see a resurgence of it and I am down. I like it. Although I don't really know how I'm wearing it, but I'm still down. Addison and Ray just did a really nostalgic carousel on Instagram that just like screams Tumblr core and indie sleaze. Okay, this is a trend that I am just like not down with at all. Sailor trend. It's like the big blouses with the big collars and the way that it's tied and stripes and things like that and nauticalness. Another trend that was a common theme amongst a lot of the videos that I saw and a lot of the articles that I read is that pants or trousers, if you're British, are going to be slimmer this year. There will be a societal shift. Our trousers and our pants and our jeans were too baggy last year and we're going to revert back to slimmer fitting trousers. Not necessarily skinny. I personally wouldn't really wear anything super skinny just because it doesn't really suit my body type. This slimmer fitting trouser trend started off last summer and spring when we were wearing capris and now we're going to see it in our full length pants. And a slim pant with like a ballet flat I think it's just a very chic look and it falls underneath 90s minimalism so it works for me. I was going to say I don't think I have anything really really baggy in my wardrobe anyway but look at the shorts I'm wearing right now. Like these are crazy baggy. If I take off this belt the trousers were to very much drop down. They are way too big for me but that is what makes them fun but this is probably the only really really baggy thing that I have in my wardrobe. Sorry ignore this mess this is stuff that I need to list on Depop. In Lainey Ozark's video she spoke about pea coats and swing coats. Yes 100% yes love this and I didn't own anything like it. I went on a bit of a vintage rampage like a week ago now and bought like different swing pea coat style jackets. I'm very excited to style and wear them and this one particular outfit has just been in my head for a few weeks now and I think this is a trend that's super cute, super stylable, maybe it kind of somewhat could fall into coquette and underneath that umbrella of girl. Okay I think that's everything that's on my list. If you have seen any other trend predictions that you are super into or super not into let me know in the comments because I'm down to see what it is I've missed in this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in my next video. Love you, bye.